Hi, I'm Ben Salisbury with the Salisbury Creative Group. I've spent 35 years selling wine and spirits. Uh, 17 of those years were for Constellation Brands and St. Michelle Wine Estates. Uh, I also worked for Glaciers Distributors at one point in my career. So I know what I'm talking about. I've been around this industry for a long time. For the last six years, I've been on my own consulting for wineries and craft distilleries. The main thing that I do, my team and I do, is to help wineries and distilleries with their sales strategy so they can be more successful. A lot of this has to do with the enablement of technology. But today, I'm gonna to address a question that I get more than any other question, which is how do I find a good distributor? So in a minute, I'm gonna change over to my desktop and walk you through a presentation that I've prepared just for this question. I hope you find great value in it. And there'll be a lot of links in the description down below on this video. So be sure you go through there and click on anything that you want to get more information on. So without further ado, I'm gonna kick off this presentation. Okay, let's talk about how to find a wine distributor or a spirits distributor. They're often uh, the same. So a lot of people ask me this question, how do I find a wine distributor? Well, what they really should be asking is, what am I gonna do when I get one? And what should I expect from these distributors? There are, depending on who you talk to, there's between 700 and 1200 distributors. There's a lot of really, really small ones in uh, certain states like California and New York, there's, there's a lot more. But if you look at, peop, at distributors that are servicing uh, the full market, it's probably closer to 700 or so, but it's a lot. It's a daunting task to try to find one. And in this video, I'm gonna give you resources that show you the databases of all the distributors that allow you to reach out to them and contact them. But before I do that, I think it's really, really important that I share with you what it is that you're gonna get from these distributors, or more importantly, what you're not gonna get. This is the big myth that so many believe, that once I find a good distributor, I'll teach them all about my brands, and they will go out and build new distribution for me. For their troubles, they'll receive between 25 and 35% gross profit. Now, the second part of this is absolutely true, but the first part is a bit of a myth. People uh, believe that if they find a distributor, that the distributor is gonna build distribution. That used to be the case. For decades and decades, it was the case. It's not the case anymore, and you need to understand that going into this. If you're wanting to go find a distributor so that you can sell more product, you're in for a rude awakening. And here's why. There's just way too many wineries and way too few distributors. This illustration comes from Silicon Valley Bank. And yes, it's a few years old, but the situation has only gotten worse since this was published, not better. It's impossible for distributors to do what they used to be able to do because their portfolios are chock full of brands. It doesn't matter if you have a large distributor, a medium distributor, a small distributor, it doesn't matter. They all have the same problem. They're overwhelmed. It's not really a function of desire or motivation for them. It's just a function of what can they do or not do. It's a capability issue. So here's the two things that a distributor can do for you. You must accept this reality or you're gonna be very, very frustrated for a long time. Number one, hold inventory of their products in their warehouse, that should say in their warehouse. And number two, deliver your products to the accounts that you have sold. Distributors can only do those two things. So when you're searching for a distributor, you can see that if all you're looking for them to do is actually physically distribute the product to the accounts that you sell, it's less critical which distributor you choose because at the end of the day, you're gonna to have to go find your own accounts. You're gonna to have to generate your own demand. I have a great YouTube video called Three Ways to Help Your Distributor Help You. If, you're, if you already have a distributor or you, you wanna understand how to work better with them, this video will really help you. It's on my YouTube channel. You should check it out. Now, at this point, a lot of people say to me, well, wait a minute, don't I have to have a distributor? Isn't that the law? Well, it is, but things are evolving. 
it, this slide is so important. If you've never really paid attention to the fact there are l really three scenarios now for you to use a distributor, a legal distributor. You have to have that middle tier. Uh, option one is a traditional three-tier distributor, which we're talking about here. But you may not be aware of the other two options. Option two is an online distributor, which you may or may not have heard of. And then option three, using a clearing distributor in a winery direct or spirits direct relationship. So let's talk about each of these three very quickly. Number one is the traditional option a physical distributor with a warehouse and delivery trucks and a sales team. It is the three-tier system. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these, as we've already said, of different sizes. The top 10 control the vast majority of the distribution in the country. In fact, the top three control almost all of it. So it's really a crowded, crowded space. You're familiar with Southern Glaciers. They are the largest they're in every state in the U.S. except for, I think, five or six states. I could be wrong about this list. I took this off their website. There's the thinking that if I could get into a big national distributor like this, I would just, all my problems would be solved. I could be selling all this product. Uh, there's RNDC as well, big and getting bigger. They're in so many states and growing. Uh, the, here's the thing about RNDC and Southern Glaciers. You, if you're a small producer, your chances of getting into their book are extremely low. Very, very difficult because they already have a full book of products. I think the only reason they would be interested in talking to a small supplier is if that small supplier had a really good chance of, you know, of doing something great in the world and just going on to be a really big hit. But man, that's really tough. So when you're out there looking for distributors, and you're talking to them, it really helps to know what to say to them, which I'm going to cover in just a minute. But let's look at these other two uh, scenarios. Option two is an online distributor like LibDib. In fact, if I was a small brand owner, if I were you, I would just go straight to LibDib. They're already in six states set up for distribution. Now they are an online distributor, so they don't have warehouses. They don't have, you don't have to store product necessarily. Now they have distribution centers and shipping points, but in terms of a traditional distributor, you don't have to worry about holding 45 days of inventory, that sort of thing. But you could get started on LibDib today. Go to LibDib.com, follow their instructions. They have made it so easy for, for small wineries and small distilleries to sell on their platform. They even have a mobile app for restaurants and retailers to make purchases. So. You could create a free account and be selling by the end of the day. So you definitely want to check out this option for the six states that they are in. Number three is a clearing distributor, which a lot of people don't really know about. Uh, Chatelaine in Texas is an example. Um, there are many, many examples. They're hard to find because they're really just a, a, a bump the dock distributor. They they just are there to check the legal box of getting the product from point A to point B, passing through a distributor. I have a great video um, on my YouTube channel called uh, Wine and Spirits Direct Deals. It's a recording of a webinar that shows you how these deals are done. I highly suggest you check that out if this is something you want to do. So it's very possible to go find a big customer, a big retailer, and use a clearing distributor to get your product to them. While we're on this particular option, I want to introduce you to this brand new platform called Grape In. You should definitely check it out. Go to grapein.com. But they're trying to really expedite this uh, idea of matching uh, trade buyers with suppliers uh, as easily and seamlessly as possible. Connecting trade buyers directly with suppliers. That is their MO. So you definitely want to check this out and you want to get on their program. Get in the database, start learning how to use it. This is a no-brainer for small producers. So let's talk about some other tips because I want you to be successful when you do find a distributor. And then I'll show you the database of how, the, the several databases of how to find distributors. So number one, it's really good to start with one or two states, build some traction, have a success story. Because when you go to future states, if you have a track record of success, you're going to have a much easier time getting a distributor to listen to you. 
you're going to have to do a lot of research, not just research on the distributor options in each state, but, uh, but research on what the market is like in that state. You want to research what other products are in the portfolio of each distributor. Uh, there's just so much research you need to do. Uh, when distributors complain about uh, you know, new suppliers knocking on their door, this is their biggest complaint, that nobody's done their homework. They haven't taken the time to understand their market and their portfolio. So, so do put in the time before you darken the door of a distributor. Another tip is BYOC, which stands for Bring Your Own customers. You have to bring customers to the table. A distributor is much more likely to listen to you if you've been building up a large following of trade buyers on your email list and in your social media, and, and, and you've contacted some trade buyers on your own ahead of coming into the market. This is how things are done nowadays. So if you don't already have customers who say they want to carry their product once you've found a distributor, well, you need to go back and do that first before you start looking for distributors. Now, I have a great video called Gener How to Generate Your Own Demand. It's on YouTube, 23 minutes long. You should definitely check that out because the burden of building distribution has now fallen to the producer not to the distributor. And so you need to know how to leverage social media, leverage email marketing, leverage all of your market research so that you can reach these trade buyers ahead of coming into the market. That will make all the difference in the world. So thank you for your patience. Let's get on to where you can find distributors. I hope the, the previous slides are helpful to you because it's not enough just to find a distributor. You need to know what to do with them and how to be successful partnering with them. But these are some great resources. This will save you a ton of time on the internet searching and searching. Uh, so first is Wine and Spirits Wholesalers of America, WSWA. Uh, this is the National Organization for Wholesalers. You need to check out all of their resources on their website. Beverage Trade Network is next. They have a fantastic database of importers, distributors, helpful articles. Uh, it's just a great resource. If you're not familiar with them, go to their site now. Also, Wine Searcher has really improved their features around distributors. So check out winesearcher.com. Um, they, you can get a pro account with them for very little money and it opens up a whole world of search capabilities. Next is Wines and Vines. Uh, Wines and Vines Analytics, they probably have the most comprehensive database of importers, distributors, wineries, you name it. And their data includes contact information. So there is a fee, but if you really want, the fee will save you so much time and money uh, researching. So I highly suggest checking out Wines and Vines. They're happy to send you a sample of their database so you can kind of try before you buy. Uh, 750.com has really come on strong with the way they curate lists of distributors inside their tool. So as a supplier, you definitely want to be engaged with the 750 platform. They have people who can talk to you about how to use their platform as a supplier. And, la and I mentioned Great Bin already, but you definitely want to check out Great Bin. They have, their intention is to kind of have the suppliers and the distributors and the importers all in one place where you can network with each other. Now, I want to share one final resource that I highly recommend you take advantage of. I have an online school on Teachable, and I have many courses on this in this school. Some are free, most are paid. Here's my most popular free course called the Modern Sales Playbook for Wine and Spirits. What used to work, the old playbook, no longer works. And so you need to learn the new place. <laughs> Everything in the old playbook had to do with the distributor. Finding a distributor, training a distributor, motivating the distributor, educating the distributor, working with the distributor. That playbook just doesn't work anymore. And you need to know how to be successful in spite of that. This free course will put you well on your way. So in the description, of this video, I will put a link to take you straight to the school you can enroll for free. So I hope this has been helpful to you. If this video was valuable, please hit the like button. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And so please check out all the links in the description below for more content and resources. Thank you.